Welcome back to another quick tutorial. Um, today we're going to talk a little bit about how to set up a model to look very realistic using real lighting materials. Um, how to bring that in from a program like SketchUp and then also utilizing um, you know further programs like Photoshop to really make uh, powerful designs. So I just was messing around and made this little animation of a BMW kind of like changing colors as we rotated around it. Um, and as you can see, the lights are very realistic looking, glowing up and glowing here inside the car, leaving a shadow on the floor. The uh, glass gives this nice reflection, almost this chrome look. Um, and it is keyframe to change colors every about 40 or 50 frames, which I think is kind of cool. And it kind of has this infinite background here, infinite stage. So it's pretty basic stuff, but uh, let's dive in and show you how we uh, how we did this. So first thing is I brought the car in from cinema from uh, sorry SketchUp, and uh, you know one of the thir first things I noticed is you started adding materials to all the parts of the car, is that some of them don't look right. And now why is that? Well. When you bring things into Cinema 4D from other programs as a Collada file, uh, what can happen sometimes is that basically you're not looking at the front of the uh, polygon, you're looking at the back of it. So what that means is basically your normals are not properly aligned or they're reversed. So in this case, I've got all this black showing up here and if I, if I render, I've got my, my light on. Let me just make sure I have my shadows on. If I do a quick render here, it doesn't like some of the materials aren't prevalent. Uh, this does have the yellow on it, but I can't see it in the car. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select here, and I'm going to go up to uh, Mesh, Normals, Reverse Normals. And boom, now I've got it back. And, and uh, this car was designed, interestingly, so there's some of these little pieces here that I'm just going to go through and make sure I've selected all of them and uh, do the same process here. Just do the reversing of the normals. Oh, now i got to select uh, this, the one that I already reversed because now I've double reversed it. And this should get us to a full yellow front here. Okay. Uh, the other thing that can happen is these materials aren't exactly set up the way you want. So we've got a glass material here. That is just basically has transparency turned on. What we need is a little bit of reflectance. So I'm going to go in and add a touch of Beckman. And I'm going to do like 15%. And I'm just going to add that to my headlights. And now look, and now I can actually see the headlight. Get that same stupid air. And good, now we're in good shape. Uh, I want to do the same thing to my windshield and to my windows. And I'm not going to set this up the, in, the, in the same depth that I created that other animation, but you'll be able to basically put two and two together here by the time we're done. So same thing, we've got this panel that needs our normals reversed. Um, we have the same issue going on back here. And so anyway, we're in good enough shape. Obviously, we would you know take a really reflective chrome material here, which came in as chrome, but again, it has no reflectance, so it doesn't really do anything that chrome would do. Chrome's gonna be more reflective, and that's gonna be what pops our wheels, our rims, and then I'm gonna use some just whatever material this is black that came in and I'm going to throw this on the tires and I'm going to make sure that this even has just a little bit of reflectance just like it was really well waxed so we'll take a look now again and it's looking decent um, we are obviously don't have global illumination on and uh, we're just doing a quick render preview so what do we need to do here? We need to we need to set it up so that this looks real. So I want to first create a new material for my floor. 
That's also going to give me just a touch of reflection. Maybe like 5%. And that's just going to reflect. Once we put the headlights in the car, it's going to make a little bit more of a reflective look to it. So there's a couple ways to do this. and I, I like doing both. And now this is just if you're going to do the animation part, not the not if you're going to send this off to Photoshop, but we want to create a new material that is going to have a luminance channel on, and we're really going to bump this up to like 300%. I'm going to give the headlight a little tint of blue. You know, it can be really up to you what you do with it. And then I'm going to create a uh, sphere here. Scale that way down. And let's go into our top view. And let's line up the sphere where we would have headlights. But they're not going to be perfect. So we're going to render it out and they're just going to be these bright dots. But we are getting that reflection now, which is what we want. So that's the first step. All right. Now the next step is we're going to add a spotlight. Okay. It is pointed the wrong direction. So I'm going to rotate this 180 exactly. So you can hold down shift till you get to 180. And kind of irritatedly, I'm going to drop these, have to drop these back into place as well, the same way, I, the same process I just did. Let's set a camera up for our view, and that way now I can just snap to this position. And let's render it, but you're not going to see anything happen here. So you do see a little bit of a reflective reflection here off the floor from where these spotlights are coming out. I'm going to turn the intensity down on the light to about 60% to really show you more what this... Uh, that there is light coming out of these headlights, but it doesn't look very good. So what we need to do is we need to actually change these lights from the spotlight to a IES. Okay. This basically means a light, you know, normal light, the way that it falls off, the way that it interacts with other objects, um, such as the body of our car, which we also need to add a little bit of reflectance reflectance to you know think of like an automobile paint job um, we need IES lighting for it to look much more realistic and we still don't have that going on so what I'm gonna do is go into our lights and under photometric we want to use photometric intensity and we can turn this up it doesn't need to be that bright somewhere around there will work for now and then we need photometric data so we basically need a file an IES file um, and Cinema 4D does come with some presets to uh, to act as our IES light so I've got them downloaded in here there's plenty of free IES lights out there I'll just pick this one for now and you'll see here a little preview of what it looks like. It does look exactly like a intense lamp pointed down or a spotlight or even a headlight. So now we've got the 
light set up, I've turned my light down a little bit, and I'm gonna then go in and into my render effects. I'm gonna add global illumination, which is gonna increase the re render time. But now you're gonna notice that uh, as it does this irradiance cache, basically it is calculating where all the light is being affected in the scene. You can see right there from the preview of as it's doing its main passes that the headlights are in fact looking a lot more realistic. And um, I'm gonna let this render out and uh, get back to you in a second. Okay, so we're done rendering and we're back looking at our model with the headlamps now active and it's looking pretty good. Now, I some of the uh, placement of my lamps is a little bit off, but it's doing exactly what we want as far as lighting is concerned. Um, you know, I, I rendered that at, in, with global, global illumination on, and I'm only using a uh, uh, Mac Mini here with 8 gigs of RAM, so it's much slower. Um, but while we're working, we're just going to turn global illumination off, and it's still going to give us a preview of what it what it should look like. Um, I'm going to exit my camera so I can move around a little bit. Um, and I'm going to intensify the lighting a little bit. Give it another preview. And it's starting to look, it's starting to look pretty good, I think. Um, it's not perfect. Um, there's a lot of, you might want to use a V-Ray renderer or you might want to use the physical renderer, um, both of which I have. Um, so to do that, just change your renderer to physical. It's going to do a bit better job of uh, doing uh, handling all the lighting, shadows, etc. And uh, it does have some noise here, though, that uh, I'll have to change in the settings. But I've got my intended look here. These headlamps are glowing. They are lighting and interacting with my material here. Um, and they're casting this shadow or this uh, beam down onto my reflective surface on the floor. Um, so the next thing we can do is, if we go back into our camera view, um, creating that kind of that tracking shot. Uh, we'll go into the top view here, and we'll we'll look to find where our camera is. Okay, so our camera is over here. Um, our car is there and we'll bring up all the panels and we're gonna create this track so what you do is you go in you grab an arc object or spline we're gonna bring it over here we're gonna rotate it around so that it is almost matching up with our camera and we'll bring it right in line there. I'm going to rotate it a little bit more. You get the gist of what I'm doing here. Just so it's centered with the with the car. And over here in the front view, I'm going to bring that up so it's basically even with the camera. And then I'm going to expand the radius of it. Make it larger. Bring it back into position. I should have done that first but I'm hacking around here today. Okay, so now on the camera, we're gonna go tags, Cinema 4 D tags, align to spline. Drop it into our spline path. Now you'll notice we're, we're off if we just played this as is um, with the path highlighted and just created a keyframe there. Sorry, I need to be under the um, position. Keyframe it at 0%, go to 90 frames, keyframe it at 100. You'll notice that my car is not being focused upon whatsoever. It's just kind of a wasted animation. So uh, we also need a target tag. And we're gonna make the target the car. And now when we play it, you'll notice up here, the camera keeps the car 
in the frame the whole time. Okay? So we've solved now the camera move and then if we want to change the color we'll just go into our body material here and where we find color this can be keyframed as well. So I'm going to go frame there at 30 frames I'm going to key it again then go one frame forward and I'm going to select a blue color keyframe it. Now I'm going to go 60 frames keyframe the blue go one frame forward select a red key it go to I'll ah, we'll just go with those three colors and now when I play it boom boom it is playing playing my camera track showing my headlights and changing my colors as we rotate now there might be a little uh, edit this still needs to be made here with our normals I've showed you how to do that already I've showed you how to set up cool lighting you can always just adjust the position of this arc to be closer so that as it moves around the car it stays closer you can even I do this a lot because the car is one big object but you might want to focus more on like the dashboard of the car you can even create an object like a cube and just put it somewhere in the car that you want to focus on so let's say you know it's up a little bit higher and then in our target drop the cube in and now we're looking much more at the at that, that part of the car and then just check off the cube and you won't see it now we're, we're kind of starting to get the uh, motion track that we want there and let's just go ahead and render it out and obviously you'd have to select all frames I just did just this frame but we're starting to look a lot better so last thing you do is just do all frames start your render Get rid of that junk and we are making our little animation so sorry for fumbling around there uh, this was a quick tutorial on how to uh, properly import a model and set up your materials as well as your lighting and create a camera track animation um, the last thing that you can do if you're just creating a photo just for like a marketing purpose you can export one of these frames as a, as, as a JPEG or a TIFF and bring it into Photoshop and then where the headlamps are uh, it's popular to just add a render a lens flare um, and put that where the headlamps are and now you get this really cool lens flare uh, photo but a um, lot you can do uh, I hope this was uh, helpful and uh, good luck with your animating